Hi everybody, this is Dr. Liz Musil and I'd like to welcome you to the presentation Analyzing Research Projects Peer Review. Professional Practices for Peer Review. The science journal Nature is often used as an example of the peer review process, perhaps because their policies and guidelines are clear cut and easy to understand. While your work may not yet meet scholarly rigors of a journal such as Nature, it's a good goal to aspire to. Understanding the review process of a well-respected journal gives you insight into the reasons you must structure your research papers in a certain way for your academic projects. Along with knowing the requirements that must be met for peer review, there are good practices to actually writing a peer review and good practices for reading and responding when you receive a review. Knowing how to approach a review can clarify the process of writing comments and it can give you a little preparation for receiving comments. One great thing to do is take a look at the peer review policy for the journal Nature to get an idea of the level of professionalism expected in the publishing world. And the link is right on your slide. The concept of a peer review. Peer review has existed since scientists put their minds to work in pursuit of understanding the environment around them and then sought to share their studies and experiments with a wider community. Back in the 17th century, the Royal Society of London published what is considered to be the first scientific journal, and the editor gathered a small team of scientists in order to elicit expert opinions on the papers he received. Since then, it has been standard practice by scholarly journals to gather together a panel of experts to review research submissions before these papers are published. That practice has evolved beyond the academic and scientific community as well, and you will find peer review guiding serious business publications as well as determining who gets money from the government, venture capitalists, and corporations for projects in the arts, technology, medicine, city planning, and more. Think of the television show Shark Tank, where a panel of successful venture capitalists debate the merits of presentations by hopeful business owners, and you can see how the concept of a peer review has saturated our society. When you are chosen as a member of a panel to review a research study, you are being asked to review the quality of the research. A professional chosen to conduct a peer review is selected because he or she is very familiar with the field, with its professional and academic standards, its history, and its emerging trends. Therefore, that person is considered uniquely qualified to assess the quality of a research paper and suggest changes and improvements. By sharing a classroom for a semester with other students and pursuing knowledge about a specific topic, you become a qualified peer. In the context of the academic world, you're uniquely capable of understanding the scientific requirements for conducting and reporting research in your course of study, and therefore you are qualified to assess the work of other students. Practical steps for reviewing. While you may have the qualifications to evaluate another student's work, when someone first hands over their research, it may be unclear where and how you should begin a peer review. You can take some practical steps to streamline the process of reviewing a peer's research paper. First, as you read a paper, write notes in the margin whenever you encounter a problem or have a question if you're working with a hard copy print, or use track changes or the insert common feature in Word if you are reviewing it electronically. You want to review and record your reactions as you go because you may forget some of your questions or concerns by the time you reach the end of the paper. Second, take breaks as you review. When you have worked, when you have to work with technical or dense material, it can be mentally and physically exhausting. Take the time during your break to consider the paper as a whole. You can do this by keeping the primary research question in mind and reflecting on how other areas of the paper succeed or fail at addressing the question. Finally, when you have finished reading, create two separate sections for your review. The first section is an overall assessment where you give your initial response to the general quality of the work. The second section is a detailed assessment where you offer specific comments. This is where you go back to the notes you made in the margins of the paper or in electronic comments and copy them down in one place. 
considerations when performing a peer review. While it is your job as a reviewer to offer critical feedback, it is important to consider exactly how the researcher will use your comments. With that in mind, avoid creating more work for the researcher. You may see where the areas of writing could be improved or where they could do more work, but you should consider whether your suggestions are feasible. What you are measuring when you're reviewing is whether the work contributes more knowledge about the topic within the context of your class or the journal or the project. The author of the paper spent a good time researching the topic, but because you are studying in the same topic class, you may have a more sophisticated breadth of knowledge on the topic than <clears throat> the people outside your class. That means you must be straightforward but reasonable in your feedback. When you encounter areas of the paper or research project that you do not understand, the author must address this. But rather than suggesting that the author has made an error, you can request that he or she clarifies a point. Most people don't take criticism well. Some people even see any suggestion or change as a personal attack. One way to counter this reaction is to couch your suggestions in more personal terms to soften the blow. You can try opening your comments with phrases such as, to me it seems that, or I had trouble understanding. The journal Nature offers a good list of guidelines that a reviewer should have in mind to generate useful comments. For example, as you review a paper, you want to consider who will be interested in reading the paper and why. This is a matter of understanding the audience for the paper and for whatever institution or publication you review the work for. The paper should contain different information depending on whether you're writing to an expert audience or writing to the general public. For example, a research paper intended only for your class or for an academic journal or presentation to a similar scientific audience should be more complex than a paper that might be presented in a newspaper. As you review, you are verifying that the paper clearly states the main claims of research as well as expresses how significant these claims are. That is to say, the author must be able to thread that message through every section. Along with communicating the importance of the study, you are considering the questions of how the study stands out compared to others in the field. In the classroom, this is a matter of judging how well certain papers stand up from others submitted by your classmates. You can make the determination by judging which papers are more thoroughly researched or which papers more carefully connect results to conclusions. You're also judging a paper by its originality, which can range anywhere from a unique hypothesis to a creative approach to data gathering to sophisticated statistical analysis. And while the paper may be original, a novelty alone is not enough to make a study valid. The research claims in a strong research paper should be convincing. The writer should provide sufficient evidence and sufficient explanation that that evidence shows you as a reviewer that the results are relevant and meaningful. When you review a paper and the research is lacking in these areas, your comments should focus on what type of evidence the researcher needs to provide or what studies the researcher may need to pursue to make the paper stronger. But your comments need to be realistic. Remember, you don't want to create an unreasonable or difficult work for the researcher. Finally, when you give your review on a research paper for content and quality, you are not reviewing the writing. Don't bother making any changes or suggestions about how the author could write a section better because that information is not relevant to a peer review. Appropriate ways to respond to a peer review. What if you are being reviewed? You may be one of those people who don't take criticism well. Keep a few things in mind as you read the feedback you obtain from your peers. First of all, give the critique a chance. Ask yourself whether the reviewer might be making valid points and take several minutes to think about the comments. If you consciously ask yourself this question and give yourself time to mull over the review comments, you apply critical thinking strategies to your own response rather than immediately rejecting any comment you don't like. Often the reviewer is wrong because the mistake is likely because of confused communication within your paper. Therefore, you may need to address the area of confusion which may involve rewriting your statements more clearly, including more background information or providing more evidence to support your claims. If you have the chance to respond to comments, answer within the paper. In the professional research world, 
you do not have the opportunity to have a private discussion with your reviewers, so you should be accustomed to the limitations of peer review. You can respond by explaining how you intend to make changes to address a comment. Reflection. The peer review process is an established system in higher education, as well as in the scientific community. When you learn this process, you are learning how to apply objective, critical thinking skills to assess your work and the work of others. You participate in creating and promoting quality research. The process of evaluating your own work for peer review makes you accountable for your research and helps you understand how to meet professional standards. Your ability to review will give you a solid foundation in recognizing those standards in other papers. Of course, there are wider benefits to peer review than just getting and giving feedback. In particular, you get to learn about the discoveries of other researchers have found through their data, and you may learn different angles or techniques on how to approach a research design that you can use in the future in your own work. In a survey conducted by the American Institute of Biological Scientists, where researchers questioned people who had served as peer reviewers, more than 70% of the reviewers stated that participating in the peer review exposed them to new scientific areas and technologies. In addition, when the reviewers begin to track the work done by the researchers to keep current, they sometimes went on to collaborate on other projects. The peer review process is not limited to the academic world and publishing papers in a scholarly journal. The stakes are high in the world of research because of the quality of your work, the quality of your paper, and your ability to communicate the value of your studies can be directly translated into dollar signs. Many researchers and their institutions rely on a variety of sources of funding, from government grants to corporate empowerments in order to keep their departments running, not to mention investigate scientific problems that impact the real world. And competition for funds is fierce. Most researchers must present their ideas as research proposals, which can be as comprehensive as a research paper in order to find funds. Just like a scholarly article, the research proposal goes before a panel of experts for peer review. And these experts judge the quality of the proposal and predict the value of the intended work to decide whether or not just to go ahead with the funding. In summary, when you conduct a peer review, you are reviewing the quality of research in a paper. You are uniquely qualified because of your knowledge of the field to provide insightful feedback. There are practical and necessary steps for providing meaningful feedback, writing notes in the margin, taking breaks, and providing an overall assessment along with specific commentary. As you review your job, it is to verify that your peer has clearly expressed the primary claims of the research and that they have emphasized the importance of those claims. Peer review is an established process in higher education and in the professional world. By learning the requirements of the system of feedback, you're learning how to apply objective, critical thinking skills for evaluating your own work and the work of others. On a final note, we should consider that electronic publishing is becoming a common format to distribute the results of research study, and this is changing the peer review process. While researchers agree that peer review is a valuable tool, it often takes a long time, often a year, for the paper to move from submission to publication. Because of the speed of the internet, and thus the speed at which information has become obsolete, research authors are pushing for a more open process than traditional peer review so that their studies can read a wider, reach a wider audience faster. And many scientific publishers are adapting to the new electronic publishing world. This concludes our presentation on peer review. I hope you've enjoyed it and learned something. This is Dr. Liz Musel saying thank you so much for your time.